The Pentagon's Acquisition and Sustainment Office, known as ANS, hasn't had an undersecretary to lead it since January. The Defense ANS Office makes it possible for cutting-edge warfighting capabilities to be delivered to the troops, which is a challenge without a confirmed undersecretary. Jeff Bialos is former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Industrial Affairs, currently a partner at Eversheds Sutherland. Jeff, welcome. Pleasure to be here. All right, so tell us, Jeff, what have been the challenges since January when there was a, an undersecretary in place? The, the problem is that the acquisition system, as we know it, think of it like as a, a multi-complicated orchestra or maybe a carrier that has to be moved. It needs someone to orchestrate. It needs someone to make hard and tough decisions. And with the out of political uh, appointee at the top, there's nobody there to do it. There are acting people who are in necessarily going to be risk averse and not make those decisions. So frankly, the system is in some degree of stasis. I, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people have reacted to this piece I just wrote on this subject from the system, which tells me and tends to confirm that diagnosis. That people really care about this. Right. But has this actually impacted the acquiring of military capabilities? It slowed decision making and it slowed the ability to align what we're doing acquisition program-wise with our policies on addressing near care, peer competitors and the like. You said that um, the ANS office should, quote, do acquisition triage. What does that mean? That's right. What I mean by that is the last several undersecretaries have embarked on various kinds of acquisition reform, systemic change in the system, dividing acquisition from research, uh, OTAs, use of other transaction authority, uh, consortium, all sorts of things. Many of them haven't worked. They take years to mature if they do work. And I think with an undersecretary who's only going to be in office here, even if they're announced and you know, maybe it's coming in the next couple of days, you're likely to only be in office two and a half, two and three quarter years. I say instead of going for systemic change, go for focused outcomes to bring our national security solutions to war fighters. In other words, acquisition practice rather than policy, if you will. Well, you mentioned OTAs, other transaction authorities. Isn't that, I mean, that's in place. Isn't that a good solution to speed things along? It could be used the right way and in the right hands, and that's example. So we don't know what, we need to look and do a system check on that. What have we been doing on that? It's been in use. We, we, we took a lot of experimental steps like that. They've been going on, but we need to do a system check now on which of these things are working and which aren't. But by triage, I meant three things in particular, if I may, okay? Um, one is let's align our acquisition programs with our um, national security needs. We, at Washington is all a talk about near peer competitors. We need to make sure the programs match that. But at the same time, um, you know, even though there's not an appetite for any more Afghanistan type uh, incursions, the reality is what our armed forces have been doing the last 20 years is a range of low intensity things from humanitarian to peacekeeping to... Um, and we'll still have to continue we'll doing still that. And we'll still have to do that, absolutely. And we need to make sure we have the equipage and the capability to do that. So I'm a little concerned in the chorus of Washington today on near-peer competitors that people want to leave this behind and, and we need to focus across the board. That's one. Two is uh, what I call work through. Okay, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's not about acquisition policy. It's about looking at the large and important programs one by one and looking at performance challenges in cost, in capability, technical performance, in speed of delivery. And that's not done by grandiose policy. It's done by working through one by one. And that's the kind of thing that's probably missing in action to some degree today. Okay. Third is what I call pull through, okay, which what I mean by that is, um, you know, every day you wake up and you hear, we're falling behind. Woe is me. Especially right? artificial a near intelligence, a, a, hypersonics. hypersonics. <laughs> a, near, a, near, a near Sputnik moment we just heard, right? Yeah. Okay. I think what the Pentagon needs to do is do a really metric look at what it means to fall behind. So look at each of these areas where we've been spending a good deal of money over a number of years. Where are we in the capability development? Are these things mature? Can they be pulled into programs of record? The, our side of the house is doing research in all these things. The issue in the Pentagon is always what we call the valley of death, getting things from our research into production. 
Okay. And so the problem here is that, again, this is where having the orchestra leader is important because, you know, left to their own devices, programs are risk averse. They're focused on short term, um, you know, necessarily cost, schedule, and can they get the delivery out the door tomorrow. When you talk about injecting new technology into programs of record, it necessarily is a disruptor. And I think you need senior leadership to say, let's do these things. You know, your article says that the DOD should, quote, launch accountability reviews to address major program and contractor right. specific performance issues. Are you telling me that's not being done? I don't think it's being done at a, grand, a, a, a top level, no. I think it's being done, uh, you know, in the normal course in the system. But, you know, I, when I was in government, we, we did things like that. We'd call in the major contractor. We'd go through 10 or 15 of their programs on a Saturday. And, you know, there would be some head knocking going on, frankly. And I think you need to do that. But it needs to be done by, it doesn't have the effect if it's not done by a confirmed senior leader. All okay, right. Fundamentally. Well, Jeff, a lot of people want to see this happen, so let's hope that, that that gets done. Thank you so much for being on the program. Pleasure to be here with you today.